All right, in this lesson, we're going to continue to look at optimization problems. If you're one of my students, this is the first uh, part of 6.6. .6. In the previous section, what we did is we investigated the objective functions within, uh, with having to do it with the system of linear inequalities. In this next problem, the objective function is g is equal to negative 2x plus 5y. What we found out is that objective functions are always maximized or minimized in the corners of the solution region. So if you look at this particular problem where it has a solution region, we can anticipate that this objective function, g is equal to negative 2x plus 5y, will be maximized or minimized in one of these particular corners. <clears throat> So let's just apply that knowledge to this particular problem. It says determine the optimal solutions, so maximum or minimum solutions, that just means max or min solutions for the system of inequalities graph below using the objective function g is equal to negative 2x plus 5y. So that's our objective. We want to maximize or minimize that objective. Now because the objective functions always change in a predictable way, we found out that that happens in the corners. They're either going to be maximized or minimized in the corners. So let's just go ahead. I'll use different colors here, as you can see, and investigate the value of the objective function in each of the corners. So if I investigate the point, for example, 0, 5, what I'm doing is just placing 0 for x and 5 for y into the objective function. So we'd have that the objective function g is equal to negative 2 times x, which is 0, plus 5 times y, which is 5. So the value of the objective function there would be 0 plus 25 which is 25. That's the value at that particular point. Now if I maybe test the point or want to see the value of the objective function at the corner 8, 5, which is this guy right here, uh, the value would be g is equal to negative 2 times 8 plus 5 times 5, which is negative 16 plus 25, which is 9. And the other two corners, so the corner 0, 0 should be relatively easy. Uh, to find the value of, it's just going to be 0, but g is equal to negative 2 times 0 plus 5 times 0. So the value of the objective function there is 0. And finally, checking the point 3, 0. <clears throat> and the value of the objective function there would be uh, negative 2 times 3 plus 5 times 0, which is equivalent to negative 6. So if you look at the values of the objective objective function, uh, they're 25, 9, 0, and 6. So the, mac the minimum uh, is negative 6. So that would be the point 3, 0. That's the minimum, or the coordinate where the minimum happens. And the value of that objective function was negative 6. And the maximum is this green point here, which is 0, 5. So that would be the maximum is 0, 5. And the value of the objective function there is 25. So we just found out that, that those are the two corners where they're maximized or minimized. Um, if you investigate this a little bit more carefully, you could have actually anticipated that because the maximum would be where x is as small as possible because it's negative 2x. So if x was large, you'd actually get a smaller value and positive 5y. So the maximum would occur where x is really small and y is really big. And if you look here, at this point, x is 0 and y is 5. So that's going to be your maximum. Whereas the opposite is true for your minimum. If you want a small value, you would want x to be large because negative 2 times a large number is a negative value. And you want y to be small. And if you look at all the points here, where x is the largest is 3 and y would be the smallest at 0. So you're going to have a minimum value there because x being large gives you a large negative number. Um, that's just some patterns that you may get used to. You can anticipate where these particular maximum or minimums are going to occur. In this next problem, which you may want to pause at some points and just try some things on your own. It's always advantageous to try a few things on your own, pause things, play them, and see if they work for you. We're going to do an entire uh, model from scratch. So we're going to set up the solution region and then find out where the maximum or minimum solutions are. So as you can see here, uh, the problem says the following model represents an optimization problem. So it's a problem. We're going to have to create a solution region and find out where the maximum or minimum are. And it says determine the maximum and minimum solutions. So the restrictions is whole numbers. We'll apply that later on. These constraints uh, have everything to do with the solution region. So basically with these constraints, we're going to set up the solution region. Okay. <clears throat> so the first two constraints here basically mean that we're dealing with positives. So if ever at any point in time you see y is greater than 0 as x is greater than 0, it means we're dealing with positives. For me to apply that, I'm just going to cross out all the negative quadrants. So your solution region has to be in the positive quadrant. Uh, next, x being less than or equal to 14, 
I've already pre-done this a little bit, the boundaries where x is exactly equivalent to 14, and you may want to try drawing that on your own before I do, or pause this and maybe try the next ones, uh, but here we go. <clears throat> so here's where x is equal to 14, and if x is less than or equal to 14, it would be below that particular <clears throat> boundary line. So there's that region there. Okay, uh, your next one, y is less than or equal to 10. Your boundary would be where y is exactly 10. Well, y is exactly 10 here, and it would be a horizontal line. So there's your boundary there. So at this particular time, uh, y being less than or equal to 10, we would shade or do some lines, or the solution would be below that boundary line. Uh, next one, y is greater than or equal to x. A little bit more of a difficult boundary line. The boundary line is where y is equal to x. Uh, it's going to be a slanted line because we have both variables. Um, you may want to just put an x equals 0. If you do that, you'll get y equals 0, which is the y-intercept here. And if you put in y equals 0, unfortunately, you'll get x equals 0, which is the exact same point. So in this particular case, since we only have one intercept, so the x and y-intercept are the same point, um, a few ways you could go about this. You could just think of where's the point where y is equal to x, or you could choose any other value for x or y. I'm going to choose x equals 1, and if I substitute that in, I will get y equals 1. So that's the coordinate when x equals 1, y equals 1 right here. So y is equal to x there. So that boundary line is where y is equal to x. So the point 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. Uh, that's your boundary line in this particular case. Now if we wanted to try a test point, which you could, so there's your boundary line, you'd want to ask yourself, so we're going to test and we can't test 0, 0. Let me test, for example, <clears throat> doesn't even matter, test this point, for example. So is y, that point right there, is the point uh, 4, 12. So is y bigger than x there? So is y greater than or equal to x? Or in other words, is 12 greater than or equal to 4? And that would be a yes. Right, y is bigger than x. So on that side of that particular boundary line, since that's a yes, it would be on that side of the boundary line. So this would be the side of that boundary line where y is greater than x. Uh, the last boundary, <clears throat> or the last inequality here, is 6x plus 3y greater than or equal to 36. Again, what you may want to do is find the intercepts by substituting x equals 0, and that will give us 3y equals 36. And if you divide by the coefficient 3, you will get that y is equal to 12. That's your y-intercept. And if you substitute y equals 0, you should get the x-intercept. <clears throat> so you have 6x equals 36. You may want to pause this, try it on your own. You get x equals 6. So that's our <clears throat> x-intercept. So our boundary line would be this line right here. And if it says where that is greater than 36, we could do a test point. So for example, if we tested the point 0, 0, we'd ask ourselves, is 6 times 0, we're just substituting it into the inequality here, is 6 times 0 plus 3 times 0 greater than 36? Or in other words, is 0 greater than 36? And the answer to that question is no. So we wouldn't shade the side that contains 0, 0, we'd shade the opposite side. So that would be this side of that red line. So if you investigate this carefully, which is a little bit hard to do with all the mess that's happening here, uh, you can see that all the parts overlap on this particular triangle. It will not always be a triangle, but has happened to be in a lot of the recent examples. <clears throat> so here's your solution region with these corners here. So that's our solution region uh, right there. So we're kind of halfway done the problem. We've done the more difficult half, which is coming up with the solution region. Now what we're going to do is try to find out um, which of these corners maximizes or minimizes the objective function. So we've got three points. Uh, this point right here, let me label them all, is the point 1, 10. This point here is the point 10, 10. And this point here is the point 4, 4. Those are the corners of our solution region. So those are the points that we need to test in our objective function. So if I, I want to see the value of 1, 10 in my objective, that would be r is equal to negative 1 plus 2 times 10, right? Negative x plus 2y. I'm just substituting that into here. So we get that the value is negative 1 plus 20, which is 19. Uh, let's go ahead and find out the value of the objective. 
for the point 1010. 10. So we're just testing the corners to find out where our optimal solution lies. So that would be a value of negative 10 plus 2 times 10, which is negative 10 plus 20, which is 10. And finally, the last corner to test was the point 44, 4, and that would be a value of negative 4 plus 2 times 4, which ends up being 4. So if we look at the values here, uh, this is our maximum. 19 is our biggest value and 4 is our smallest value. So our maximum solution would be at the point 110, right here, and our minimum solution would be at the point 44. And that is how to set up a solution region as well as find out where the optimal solutions lie, the maximum minimums for the particular objective function.